Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Rick. I'm a heating, air conditioning, refrigeration technician. So I use tools like you see here in front all the time. These are thermal imaging cameras. Uh, HSF Tools uh, reached out to me a few months ago and had me do a review on the P2W. So if you want to see that review, you can click on the link up above here and uh, check that out. This is their best performing camera. It's their most expensive camera but it is a really good camera and I've been pretty happy with it and it's done a really good job. Uh, they reached out to me again, wanted me to do a review here on the HF96V. Now this is their most affordable camera. I thought, well, I'm not really interested in some of the smaller cameras. So what they gave me was the F2VW, which is what I have right here in front. And then I said also, how about you give me an F2VW to give away? And also give me one of the HF96Vs to give away. If you're interested in winning one of these cameras, make sure you stay to the end so that you can find out how to do that. If you know anything about thermal imagers, they all pretty much do the same thing. It's all about how much detail they get. And I'm gonna show you what the difference is. This one here has a 96 by 96 resolution. And then this one here in front of me has 256 by 192 resolution. Now there's obviously a price difference between the two of them. The one right here in front of me goes for about $439, but with the $60 rebate, you can save yourself some money. The one here on my right goes for right around about $219. They also have a $60 rebate on that. So at that kind of price point, you're able to get one of these thermal imagers for about the normal price of what a good laser thermometer is. So what we have here is the Wave 3 from EcoFlow. I'm now gonna demonstrate what happens with the heat pump section here. You can see we're starting to get warm there on the top corner of the coil. And as that refrigerant continues to flow, you'll start to see it get warmer and warmer. So you can see here on the right hand side that we actually have a scale that shows exactly what you're seeing in the image as far as your maximum temperature and your lowest temperature. And then this is where your center dot comes in handy because if you want to pick out a specific spot on the coil, that's what you're going to see on the top left hand corner on the display. You can see how this could come in handy if you're trying to diagnose problems with the refrigeration system. Now here on the back side is the actual condenser section. You can see the refrigerant is down in the bottom of the coil. It's pretty cold. Uh, we're running in the heat mode, so the front side is our hot side of the coil, which is acting as your condenser. Here, this is acting as the evaporator. Now, as far as going through the house and kind of finding different things that we can measure to kind of give you some ideas of what's going on, you can see right here we have a hot water pipe that's actually making its way through the piping throughout the house. A very common use for thermal imagers is going to be on breaker boxes to try to find warm breakers. Right now, nothing's really running warm. This is also where you might use your auto adjustment so that you can narrow it down to what area you want it to see. Nothing in the house is really running that heavily right now because the outdoor temperature is pretty moderate, so even the heat pump's not running. Now you can find transformers and things like that that could be acting up. As you can see, we've got a 114 degree transformer right there. Another common thing is uh, having ballasts that are bad, which these are LED, so they don't really have a ballast in them. But that is something that you can use any of these cameras for from a distance and actually tell if you've got something starting to fail. Pretty dark out here, but yet we are able to see what's going on in the distance, no problem at all, just from the heat that's being let off from the, you can even see the sky, <laughs> that's crazy. So the clouds are even refracting heat differently. You can see the tree out there, which you can't even see. So it's able to pick those things up. Now coming over here to the house, uh, the heat through the concrete of the basement, even with this mild temperatures out here, 55 to 32 degrees, you can see the two by fours in the wall. You're able to see whether or not there's insulation issues there. Uh, makes it kind of easy to do house inspections and things like that. But like I said, if you're looking for an animal, uh, that makes it pretty easy. Let's go ahead and take a picture of her and we'll look at it on the computer. One of the things that you can do with the thermal imager that can help the automotive guys out there is picking up on the heater elements on your steering wheels. You can start to see those happening right there real quickly. And it goes all the way around. You can see the bigger display is just so much easier to pick things up on. Now we can turn it on for the heat. You can see where my elbows were at right there. Okay, we can see it's starting to warm up there. It's just so much easier to see with the larger one. The smaller one's just not picking it up as well. The larger one is picking it up. So that's what you can see pretty easily with the more expensive one, is it just picks up those smaller details a little bit better. But if you have a broken wire or something like that, that makes it kind of easy. Now, like I said, one of the things you can see with the thermal imager pretty easily is whether or not your catalytic converters are working properly. 
you'll see the temperature ranges. If you're a mechanic, you're going to know what those ranges should be. And uh, that's with the F2VW. And same thing here. It's pretty easy to see, even with our smaller HF96V. It picks it up. When there's a definite difference in the temperature, the smaller one here picks it up pretty good. If you don't need to pick up on the smallest differences, the little one does just fine. Here we've actually heated up a refrigerant bottle to kind of see where the liquid level's at in it. The refrigerant bottle doesn't seem to work as well as a actual receiver does, but you can see the differential in the uh, two different pictures there. Uh, obviously it's picking up uh, around 99 degrees on the one, 99 on the other, so they're pretty accurate as far as between the two of them. But generally you would see an actual line right in between there, but at this point, uh, this metal's so thin, it's just not uh, doing that. Also, here goes a vehicle by. Pretty easy to see, and that's quite a distance away. So the higher resolution there definitely uh, kind of comes in handy when uh, you're looking for smaller objects. They both do a good job, but like I said, you're just getting more resolution out of the larger camera. All right, let's get right to work here. Let's go ahead and get this one opened up first. And then we'll cut the seal on this one here too. So the F2VW here, let's go ahead and take a look inside here. Starting right off on the top here, we've got calibration certificate, the user manual, the camera itself, which comes in an actual nice little bag here, has a carrying strap for it, has a thank you card, and then it has a USB cable here. This USB cable is kind of important. It seems to only work with this one and not one of my normal cables. It's just USB-C to USB-C, but it has an adapter there so that you can also use it for USB-A. So make sure you don't lose that cable. Here's the actual case. Let's open that up. Inside here is the actual camera. Here's the other camera. So this one here comes with the same certificate calibration, a thank you letter, and a manual. Comes with foam around it. So this is going to be your box to store it in unless you get another holder because this one does not come with a holster. This one here is the HF96V. And then it also has a cable here. Same scenario as what we had earlier. Make sure these turn on. Yep, they both turn on. So both cameras are working. I'll go ahead and turn those back off. So whoever the lucky winner is, they will have a brand new camera in the box. Go ahead and power these on. We'll hit both power buttons at the same time. And then we'll let up. So you can see the boot up time on this is extremely fast. These are designed and laid out pretty much about the same, but we're gonna go over some of the differences between the two of them. So the F2VW here has a actual protector that comes over to protect the infrared uh, sensor. And it has a flashlight down there and it has a visual camera here on front. The HF96V has a laser pointer, a thermal imager, which is behind a piece of plastic, and then a traditional camera here on the front. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm just gonna be calling both these cameras bigger camera, smaller camera, because HF96V and the F2VW is just a lot of words to say to get that number out there. The smaller camera has the ability to do three different types of pictures. The larger camera can do four types. So both cameras can do thermal, fusion, and visual. However, the bigger camera can do picture in picture. Jumping around to the front, both of them show the coldest spot, which you see the blue running around on the screen, the red, which is the hottest, and then the center is what you see in the center. They both have adjustable emissivity. Both of them have the ability to do negative four to 300, and then 300 up to 1200, and then do auto switching back and forth. So to kind of compare the differences between the two models, both of them have internal memory. The bigger camera has a 16 gigabyte memory. The one on the right, actual usable is about 2.2 gigabyte. One of the other things you lose with the smaller camera is the Wi-Fi ability. The larger camera is able to shoot its pictures right over to the actual phone through the app. Now they both will connect to the computer through the USB that's right up here on the very top. And they both charge right through the USB here up on the very top. The battery life on the larger camera is right at six hours. The smaller one has a little longer at eight hours. They both have a 25 hertz recycle rate, which means 25 frames per second. Most movies are shot in about 24 frames per second. So that gives you a nice smooth image. And you can see where my palm print was there right on the table, which is exactly what we've got here with this one. The resolution is where you're gonna see the big difference on the smaller camera. Now I will have links in the description down below so that you can get the discount on the cameras. If you buy through it, you help support the channel. However, you pay the same price of even if you use a direct link. So if you wanna help me out and bring more videos like this, please go ahead and use the link that I got down below. Now, as far as the menu, you hit the button. It looks like a power button over here on the right. You've got your albums right here in the front. 
They both have very similar options on that. Display settings, this is where you're gonna pick whether or not you want the hot, cold, or center spots and the parameters. The larger camera here has user-defined spots one, two, and three, which gives you the ability to customize different uh, settings. The littler camera does not have that. We go into our image settings. Both of them have the image mode that you want to use, which you have thermal, fission, and visual. And like I said, the larger camera has the picture-in-picture. -picture. The parallax uh, correction, this is where you get the regular camera and the thermal camager to get them so that the lines match up so that they're both together at the same place. One of the next settings is your palettes. You do have white hot, black hot, rainbow, iron, red hot, and fusion. And you have the ability to set alarms. You have auto. This is where I said that you could go into your actual parameters and you can adjust how far up and down the actual temperature is that it's reading. So if you have an area that you want to narrow into a certain temperature range, one feature that the larger camera has is a flashlight mode, which allows you to have a flashlight here on the front, whereas the little one actually has a laser, which I don't really find to be that useful. Here we have the temperature range mode. You have negative four to 302, then you have 212 to 1022, and you have auto switch. I do not recommend auto switch just because it can constantly get confused if it sees something that's above that 300 degree mark, and then it has to switch back to another range. Having the Wi-Fi on the larger camera here is gonna make it much more convenient to get it onto your phone so that you can send it to someone, whether it be by email or text message. Both of them have the ability to auto power off and auto sleep, which your language available here is French and English. And that's about it for the settings. Here's your albums, which you can go into that and it'll bring up your pictures. So the smaller camera here has a display of 2.4 inches for the LCD. The larger camera here has a 3.2. So because this display is so much larger, they're able to give us actual pictures. And then when you click on the, the power button, it brings it in. This picture right here was of an actual problem we were having with brakes on the Jeep. And we were able to see in pretty great detail what exactly was going on and whether those brakes were dragging or not, just because it had such a difference in the actual temperature. Now, neither one of these devices are capable of doing video live record. That's one thing that you gain when you step up to their best camera. So neither one of them record video. However, uh, when you have the Wi-Fi here, you can uh, stream it to your phone and you could record with a screenshot off of that. So which one would I go with? The one I originally went with was the P2W here, has been uh, doing everything I asked it to do. Second runner I would go with is the F2VW because the resolution between the two of them is exactly the same. Both of them are using built-in SD cards. They don't have anything that's removable. As far as the camera and stuff, they pretty much have exactly the flashlight, all that. These two items have exactly the same. Then, like I said, the HF96V, nothing wrong with it. It's affordable. Uh, if you don't need all that fancy resolution and stuff, why pay for it? They both are 6.6 .6 foot drop tested to survive that. I'm going to throw the specifications up on the screen right now. That way you can compare the two different ones and you can hit pause in the video and check that out. If you're interested in either one of these two items and winning it, please leave a comment down below of what you would do with it and how it would benefit you. The recipient that I choose is gonna have 24 hours to respond back to my comment, and then I'll have them verify who they are. If you would, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you would do me a favor, go over to HSF Tools YouTube channel, subscribe to it, leave a comment down below that you heard about their product from my channel, and thank them for giving the opportunity to possibly win one of these two items. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video, and until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.